Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy this video. Well, hello everybody. And in this video we are going to analyze in depth and I'm actually going to decipher this pyramid, the Pyramid of Cestius in Rome. Uh, do watch to the end, you'll be happy you did. I'm going to show you how to use archaeoastronomy to learn more than the archaeologists about any ancient site you want. Any ancient site you want, it doesn't matter what. So this is the Pyramid of Caius Cestius. Just, let's just examine the environs. It is actually next to a cemetery, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, there's tombs here, a, a non-Catholic cemetery, lots of tombs. All pyramids and mounds are actually next to cemeteries. It's common. That tells me that uh, pyramids themselves are not tombs, but they're there to sort of consecrate a ceremony, uh, consecrate a cemetery. Um, so um, we're going to look at a couple pictures of this amazing pyramid. It seems to have been used in a, inside a wall. And by the way, it's, it seems to be eight sided because there is a line. There are lines going down here. Um, what's going on with those two lines? They're a bit weird. It's been recycled into a, as part of a wall for a, a building, or is that the cemetery wall possibly? <laughs> the, the wall around the cemetery. Let's look at some pictures. Um, this is just a fascinating pyramid. Wait till I show you the Piranesi. You're going to love it. Um, uh, so uh, there it is. As you see, you see the height uh, compared to cars. It's quite, quite big, quite an undertaking indeed. Uh, and that is the inside. The inside was closed until the year 2000. Now it seems to be open twice a month. And to me, that looks like an Etruscan tomb. And it's rather suspicious because I'm thinking that it's hardly Etruscan at all. Or as we're going to see, it was built by the Romans, but hearkening back to earlier religious ideas. Because the Romans didn't really build pyramids. So why did they build this? And it is, it is assumed it is a tomb. The archaeologists say this was a tomb for this guy called Cestius. And I'm saying uh, it probably, uh, in my opinion, it was not a tomb, but you decide for yourselves. Uh, now, uh, there's a, a prison or something over there. We're going to, that's a, the Piranesi picture of what it looked like in the 18th century. So there's still a wall uh, just going around right there. Um, there's, that, uh, there's that castle. Uh, there's more stuff happening up here. Um, and that is what I, one, one picture I wanted to show you. This is by, not by Piranesi, but by Giuseppe Vassi. That is a very different picture. But the best one of the best pictures is this picture from uh, Piranesi. It's just, uh, this is remarkable. So firstly, look, he had such attention to detail. And I'm actually reading that Piranesi was an archaeologist. He was an archaeologist. He was a member of the London Society of Antiquity Antiquaries. Archaeologists were called antiquaries who practiced antiquarianism. And in addition, he was a curator of a museum for, anti for artifacts. In addition, he restored ancient Roman artifacts. He wanted to preserve them. And in addition, one third, one third of what he has drawn uh, apparently has disappeared. So that is a beautiful picture. Look at those funny Lego block Pumapunku um, blocks there. Fascinating. And now we're going to get into the cool bits because we can see that the pyramid has a particular alignment. Unlike pyramids in, say, Egypt, uh, where they're usually north-south, they're always north-south, um, east-west, that is not the case here. So it looks like this is aligned, sort of like a church is, vaguely east-west. So it's vaguely solar-based, so it's for a certain date of a certain festival. So all we need to do is look to see where it's aligned on a particular day, then look at a list of Roman festivals. And uh, so Roman festivals are weird. For example, um, this one here, there was a punishment for Dog's Day, a dog sacrifice and procession. And, and then there was a, a public sacrifice at the, the Temple of Salt, Salus, a Roman goddess, goddess of safety. And then um, the public sacrifice to the native sun. This was well before um, Sol Invictus. So we can look at these strange festivals. But 
what I've kind of found is this pyramid is uh, seems to be dedicated on two, with two different angles to the, uh, the goddess Fortuna, who was actually also a kind of a Renaissance goddess in a way. And I'm going to prove that. Um, it's just so fascinating. So you look up um, this pyramid, the Pyramid of Cestius. Uh, it's, a, it's at a fork in, of two ancient roads. Fork in the road. You see at the crossroads. You do a magic spell at the crossroads, right? They did this magic spell at the crossroads. It's just fascinating. They claim it was built in 12 BC. <clears throat> um, they suggest that this, uh, in the article, that this guy was on a campaign maybe around Nubia because it looks like the Nubian pyramids. Um, <clears throat> it basically... Um, and, and here's the major clue. Gaius Kesti, of son of Lucius of the, the family Pabila, member of the College of Epu, Ep, Epulones, Praetor, Praetor is a, a speaker and, and tribune of the plebs. So he was a September of the Epulones, which means he was one of the seven of this religious college. So that shows the pyramid was built for religious reasons. It was a festival pyramid. It was not a tomb. It's too big to be a tomb. It's like a temple. It was for some Egyptian religion being practiced in ancient Rome. Or was it a Roman religion? And this is so interesting because currently we just have the pontiffs, right? But there were also augurs in the day uh, doing divination. They don't do that anymore. And there were epulones who arranged public festivals, banquets and games. So now we get to the fun bit, the really interesting part that I want to show you. I mentioned before that we can calculate, and there, there, here's an entrance right here facing the cemetery. We can calculate based on the alignment what festival it corresponded to, because I believe all these pyramids are for Stone Age festivals. They're not for tombs, right? Uh, but they're, they're based on, a, I think, the, the tomb of the ancient astronaut. But that's another video. Um, that's an aside from all this because that is speculative. But here's the thing. Go to a website called suncalc.org and, and just have a look around, have a play with it. You'll notice that you can move to the geographical location, say Paris. Um, and, it, it, and what happens is I just click uh, sunrise. It shows where the sunrise is. I click uh, sunset. Uh, dusk. I click sunset. Uh, sorry, that's a culmination. I click um, sunset, and there's there's dusk, right? Uh, so it gives you the exact positions of the sunrise and sunset based on where you want it in the year. So we go to Rome, and we can say change the dates around. So we can try say a uh, uh, June the twenty first, which is the summer solstice. And that gives us the uh, the the it gives us the uh, uh, the dawn the, the the sunrise and it gives us the the, uh, the the culmination and it gives us the sunset. So it's so fascinating. Now, what I also did, I downloaded an app called Helium. Helium lets you put a window, uh, make a window transparent. So now we can superimpose. So what I've done is I bring this up in Google Maps. I try and put it overhead so it's centered. And then we just um, drag our our helium window. Um, let's just drag that through. Uh, I have to click helium, and then I can just drag it straight in like that. And then we just superimpose it onto this. We superimpose the corners onto the circle. So um, I'll make the window a bit more um, lucid, so we can um, so we can actually see it and then I'm going to type say the winter solstice so let's check that out so let's check out December uh, 21 right so this is how we start to to see where the alignments are and now what I'm going to do I'm going to make it a bit more um, uh, a bit more transparent let's bring it back to 70 percent and now we can see the pyramid and now we just line up the pyramid on the circle and what I notice straight away is uh, it's not quite a match. So, um, so let's go to say sunrise, and you see we've lined up the pyramid onto the edge of the circle. It's not quite matching up. So I thought, oh, hmm. Uh, see, I was a bit disappointed. I thought, okay, it's pointing to winter solstices. No, so it's a bit more complicated. It's pointing to a religious festival, something that we've replaced with, say, a day of the saint or something like that uh, back in the Middle Ages. So. 
I was playing around with the date, so you, you know, any you can do this too. So we we so we changed the date to say that the third and and oh, it's getting better. You see, it's getting better. And um, so let's switch to say November. So let's try November the 29th. It's now now it's more in alignment. You see, and this is how you do it. And um, you just play with this, and you examine it visually. You don't even need to know the angle. The angle doesn't matter. You just look at it visually, and that tells you what you need to know. And uh, you get around to say something like this, and it starts to really line up. So what's around November the 19th? So we, do, we go to the Roman festivals, and I'll just get that out of the way. And so around November the 19th, we have... Um, well, markets and fairs, but what we have on the 13th is the ceremonies of uh, Feronia and Fortuna Primigeni. Primigeni. So this is obviously an obscure goddess. We've lost the we've lost the um, the information. Feronia, goddesses of wildlife, fertility, health, and abundance. So it's kind of that old time resurrection religion. But it's also uh, Fortuna as well. It's based on the goddess of Fortuna. Uh, and, and then what we do, we look at the other, the other angles as well. So there's another angle there, and that's the key angle there. What is that door pointing to? So we simply go back to our old friend on, on this website. And we try, we try, um, we, we're going to look at what that, uh, that angle is, uh, that sunset angle is. So uh, we're just going to place that right there. We're going to say, um, uh, change it to summertime. Okay. So we see where it points to, to Fortuna um, in, uh, in winter. So now we'll switch to summer dates and, and you're going to get a shock. It's going to be interesting. So and I don't think anyone has done this before because historians are not arche and archaeologists are not archaeoastronomers. You need to be an archaeoastronomer. So I've switched it to July now. So let's type a date and that's all flipped. And now this uh, alignment here is pointing towards the door. So it, but it's not quite on the door, right? Let's make that a bit more um, transparent. So let's switch it to say 60% brings out that pyramid nicely. And you see it's not quite on. So it need, the door is right there. So let's let's alter that a bit. Let's try just play with it. Okay, that's swinging it the wrong way. So let's play with it the other way. And we do that. And we do that. And and that's 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 more like it, isn't it? This July. And what I found around here, around July 30, it's almost just at the door. And here at July 30, we have this ritual. Uh, I'll get that out of the way again. July 30, uh, we go to um, uh, this. So we go up to July 30. And by the way, you can do this with cathedrals. You can do this with ancient churches. You can do this with anything you want. This works. The Charles Method absolutely works. So July, this looks like J Julius, uh, this looks like J Julius Junus. Okay, Julius. Julius is July. Okay. So around July 30 is anniversary of the Temple of Fortune of this day, Fortuna. Uh, Fortune I, um, it, it is Fortune. So I, therefore, based on the archaeoastronomy, this pyramid is based on and dedicated to the goddess of fortune as a summer alignment where the sun may even enter uh, uh, at, at the sunset uh, in summer and also as a winter alignment in this direction to the goddess of fortune. I don't think that's a coincidence. I think we've solved that the Pyramid of Cestius is it's not a tomb at all. It is um, a kind of religious temple a mound to the goddess fortune. They wanted fortune to live in ancient Rome. This pyramid was built by the priests to bring fortune to ancient Rome. I mean, it's so huge. Didn't they realize it's too big for, for the tomb of one person? Didn't they get it? I mean, why doesn't everyone have one, one this big? An unimportant person has a tomb like this. They're not thinking. Cheers, guys. I hope you've really enjoyed that video, and I hope you uh, even start to do some of this if you want. It's a lot of fun indeed. Thanks very much.